conservation equals innovation because we're in an ever-changing world and an ever-changing environment. And as our needs change and as our cropland shrinks because we're growing houses and buildings and cities, we're going to have to produce more. I had a very good friend who'd like to say we have to be willing to adapt and adopt. And that goes with the changing times and the innovation. To not only be profitable, but just to be responsible. You know, the idea of, of conservation is filter strips to filter out the excess nutrients. Conservation is grid sampling and not over applying. You know, conservation is keeping residue on the ground. I think a combination of storing the moisture in the soil, raising the organic matter in the soil, uh, those are all things that help. If we have excessive erosion rates, we lose the benefits that we're trying to get to. I think the key is come up with ideas to keep your soil on your farm, follow your nutrient contents, and make decisions based on facts. We here at Valen are very excited to be partnering with America's Conservation Ag Movement. There's only so much land that we have to utilize to grow the crops that we need to feed the world. In doing so, we wanna make sure that we're utilizing all resources from sustainability practices to multiple modes of action and chemistries that we're choosing to scouting techniques that we're bringing to the farm as well. I think one of the leading technology companies in agriculture today says the seven most expensive words in agriculture is we've always done it that way. And I appreciate that message. We're looking to do it a little different. We find that uh, managing our soil health, we're looking for the long-term gain. There are some short-term consequences, and oftentimes when you adopt a new system, there's both growing pains, there's management struggles, and there can be economic struggles in the first few years. But we've found that by adopting that system that we've actually found some climate mitigation. We found that we can handle that drought stress just a little bit longer. Now, you know, it's not a magic pill because there is some management to it, you know, and there, there has to be some want to. Well, we do this because we want to keep the soil in place. We do this because it makes good sense, not because of this big major news issue. We do it because it's responsible and because we want our small little world here in Shelby County to last so that we can have it for our grandkids and that Jocelyn's grandpa could leave it to us. Some of the things we're doing today, my grandpa, when he moved here in 1953, never would have dreamed of being able to do. The concept of being able to pull a planter through cover crop that may be three, four, five, six feet tall, and being able to raise a full crop of soybeans in that situation would have just been the most foreign thing possible to him. So to me, the innovation is so key because we know there's challenges and we know there's struggles, and we're doing everything we can to continue to improve on the farm today. We, who knows what the next innovation can be that will allow us to do even that much better of job of growing soil health, keeping soil in place and reducing erosion, also being able to just control those pests and manage that crop to even greater levels in the future. To me, that's the innovations. We don't know what's around the corner, but if we continue to innovate, the conservation practices we have in our toolbox will continue to grow and continue to be better. Through a lot of my travels, I've come in contact with a lot of different farming applications, farming techniques um, across all geographies from the Mid-South to the Upper Midwest. And so, you know, there's a lot of things that we do in agriculture that are really moving the ball forward from a conservation awareness, from the practices that we, we have in place on our farms with buffer strips and buffer zones to no-till to strip-till. And as we go forward the next few years, we really need to think about what else can we do? What are their options? Are there not just on our farms specifically, but across the entire industry? So I think one of the things that as we look at it um, from a valent perspective is with our sustainable platform, there's a lot of chemistries that we have that fit into conservation tillage. There's a lot of products that fit into some of the biological spheres that we work in. Um, and so as we look at it from a seed protection standpoint, one of the most efficient uses of chemistry in agriculture is seed protection. One of my mentors in this soil health journey told me that when you start no-till and cover cropping together, the ground will stay wet longer and dry out quicker. I said, that, that's not possible. It doesn't work that way. He said, trust me, you do this a couple years, you'll know what I'm talking about. And sure enough, 
a couple years into this no-till and cover cropping together, I found that he was exactly right. Although the ground did stay wet longer, but it didn't dry out quicker. What he was referring to is that you can plant even in really wet soil when you have a lot of organic matter and you've got a mulch. You don't get that crusting and sidewall smearing and the seed trench staying open. It just all works. Here at Valent, we place great value on innovation. We have two field research stations, one in Champaign, Illinois, and one outside of Greenville, Mississippi. In both of these locations, we do work with fungicides, herbicides, insecticides, seed treatment, and PGRs. We also have a laboratory facility in San Ramon, California, where we do an awful lot of work on formulation development and a lot of our analytical work. We can't do the things that we do without all of the technology that we have. You know, I think about all the high level monitoring systems and tracking systems and the way that we check everything and we can one validate our choices and we can see the science behind what we're doing and so the things that we're doing naturally almost seem to make more sense because we can see the science that goes with it. That's something that I think um, conservation is starting to look at and starting to do a better job is measuring what we're doing whether it's a nutrient runoff issue whether it's a soil erosion issue, whether it's carbon sequestration. You know, we're starting to work with some of the companies that are doing the work with carbon sequestration. And, and I'm all about paying farmers for doing things. Absolutely, if it makes sense and if there's a benefit to the environment, let's incentivize it. But let's measure that. And let's not forget those early adopters that have been doing it for a long time. And so let's see, you know, what are they doing right? Let's reward them for doing that. And then if somebody's interested in stepping into it, like what we've been doing for a long time, let's help incentivize them to get there. So I think one of the biggest and most important things that we did is we never went wild with the scope and the size of what we were trying to do. We always try to start it on a smaller scale. For instance, the first year we tried cover crops, we picked one field, 80 acres. We spread cereal rye on it. Then we sprayed it, burned it down in the spring, and just planted the beans straight into it. And that worked really, really well. What impresses me most about today's farmers is that they're really focused on how they can improve their soil. A lot of these farms have been around for decades, and I'm always impressed with the innovations that they're looking at doing. And as you go, there's even more innovation that's coming. And those um, farmers today are looking at ways they can improve that soil so they have more longevity for their kids and grandkids into the future. Anytime you're changing what you're doing, you're changing your direction, you need to commit and realize that it's a, a long-term process. How many people will exercise for a day, say, well, that exercise, that just doesn't work for me. I did it and all that happened to me was I got sore. I'm never doing that again. I learned my lesson. But that's the way people approach no-till and cover crops. It's not a one-year yield punch that we're after. It's long-term improvement of soil. I would hope that our children and our grandchildren, as they move on in their lives and their decisions on or off the farm, will remember our efforts to protect the water and the air and do things responsibly and leave a legacy that allows for agriculture to continue and to grow.